Uh, we had full moon on our first launch attempt, and it was pretty full the rest of the time. It made a pretty spectacular uh, evening for us every night. NASA has these cameras, these secret trick cameras that look right through your hair on the back of your head. I noticed that. <laughs> this is a, a pretty ignition sequence. There's the mains uh, lighting. It was uh, not very noisy and very smooth. And you'll see some uh, shots here. You can see the igniters uh, horizontally into the flame. You also see the engines being uh, gimbaled there as a test just prior to liftoff. Those burned smooth, but boy, I'll tell you, when those solids lit, you really knew that something had hit you. There, there was, uh, uh, it was a really uh, a very big increase in vibration in the vehicle. In fact, kind of a clattering, a metallic sound within the bird, just like you're driving over, like John said, driving over a real rough road, and that's really just about how it felt. But it, it sure was a nice, solid push getting off the pad. Roll maneuver was spectacular. Boy, that thing really whips around. There it is, rolling over. And that was really some kind of ride. And as Joe said, it, was, it just seemed like a rattling of the whole spacecraft when the solids uh, were burning. Wasn't so bad that you couldn't read checklists or read any of the displays or reach any of the switches, but, but it... Uh... Here's, now here's a beautiful view of uh, the Florida coastline taken out my right window. Lay your head on your left shoulder is what looks right on this one. Off we go. This is, uh, there's the roll maneuver. Now this is uh, shown about twice the speed through a little cloud deck. There's the highway going up the east uh, coast of Florida and you can see uh, both the coastline and the, and the in inland uh, waterway. You know y'all look super out there with your heads laying on your left shoulder like that. <laughs> Notice the uh, sky getting dark. Uh, finally, of course, it was got to be solid black. And just at the end of this sequence, you're going to see uh, two stars rise right about the center of the horizon there coming up. I think. <laughs> I hope. There they come. Right in the upper right hand. Just barely saw them. These pictures were taken from, uh, from our chase planes. And uh, luckily, we didn't have to use them down there at the Cape to come back in, but they were there already. We ought to say a word for the recovery teams that recovered the solid rocket motors out of the ocean. The seas were terribly rough. Uh, this, this is a beautiful view of separation. You can see the three, the three main engines uh, lit, and we're Done with separation, the, just like John and Crip, the windows were completely enveloped in, in flame. At any rate, the seas were really rough the few days after the launch, and uh, those teams really did a super job to get the solid rocket motors out of the ocean. This is the uh, external tank separation at the end of the main engine, Miko. You could see a, a washer uh, coming out there. This cable that you see flapping around on the right-hand side of the picture is a part of the... Uh, um, the baggy installation that protects the, uh, the opening there at the fitting, at the tank fitting, and uh, was really of no consequence, although I think like Dick and I, when we first saw it, we'd have been a little concerned about that thing flapping around out there, not knowing that it wa was or was not supposed to be there. You can see the tank tumbling also, and you notice the scorched bottom end of the tank, and as it tumbles around just at the end here, you'll be able to see where the solids were not shielding it. The flame pattern started lapping back up on the side of the tank there. This is a, uh, the fun starts here uh, on orbit. Here's a couple of uh, tourists <laughs> supposed to be working and telling Houston that they are, but really looking out the window and uh, having some fun. This is the area behind the ejection seats. Now we've switched to a view of, uh, with the payload cameras, of the uh, opening of the port payload bay door. There's the arm there stowed in the lower right and the OSTA experiment in the center of the payload bay. This was at night, so the light you're seeing is reflections from the lights that were on inside the payload bay, and there's the light shafting across the Ohm's pod and up the vertical stabilizer. Center of the payload bay here is the OSTA pallet, and uh, in the upper 
center, moving to the upper center of the picture now is the SIR-A antenna, one of the major experiments on the OSTA palette. SIR-A is a uh, synthetic aperture radar. This was really beautiful uh, sight, seeing the, uh, the uh, experiments in the payload bay and then looking up there and seeing the Earth. Just about the entire duration of the flight we were oriented, well, I'll dictate you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who did that. <laughs> kind of a quick walkthrough from the elbow camera on the, on the arm. Um, if you look up there in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the camera looking back down into the payload bay, and that's where that picture was taken from. And I think this was one of the uh, t one of the TV pictures that came down uh, live that was pretty, but we had the best seat. The wireless mic uh, was a resounding success. You can see it strapped on my right thigh there, and there I'm using the uh, push-to-talk button to talk to... Uh, Sally Wright, I think, who was uh, running the RMS from, or talking to me from the control center during RMS operations. And as Joe said, this is a, earlier, this is a kind of a tour of the, short tour of the orbiter from the elbow camera on the RMS. RMS was really smooth. It, uh, in all the modes we tested it, it was, uh, just no surprises from the simulator, and uh, we had uh, we did a maneuver. Both of us did a maneuver up to the grapple fixture. Uh, as you know, we did not do a grapple on this flight. We uh, uh, the STS-3 crew is is going to do that, but I predict that they are going to like the way that the remote manipulator system uh, maneuvers in space. Just like all the people that have gone before us, we found that uh, one of the big problems was housekeeping and managing books and pencils would float by and you'd go down the mid-deck and there'd be a camera out in the middle or uh, so anything that we hadn't uh, tucked away would, we'd find quickly. I think Dick is getting ready to, to cradle the arm now. In this sequence, you'll see the, how, how the arm, how he straightens the arm out, get it into position to bring it down down into the to cradle it. The uh, one of the cradle sequences that that came down live. As a matter of fact, we have a short uh, clip of it here. Uh, tends to make you think that the arm is uh, kind of goosey, and I'll show it to you here. But actually, it's just uh, that was uh, not the primary mode, and it was one of the tests that we did. Actually, it was very very smooth. And uh, the also, you can see the, the saddles that the arm sits in there in this picture. They actually roll out from, uh, at the first of the flight, and they, they were kind of rough when we tested them down at the Cape, uh, but they were very smooth in zero-g. This, this is the view that I was talking about. Each, uh, this is uh, what we call the direct mode of the uh, RMS. But uh, the single mode is, is the mode that eventually will be used operationally, and this just proved that uh, there are alternate ways to cradle. Because of the shortened mission, Dick ended up doing just about all the RMS work, and the only thing I was doing there was running cameras and making them go to the right places to get the right views of the, the RMS operation. We didn't have much time during the mission to get planned uh, television and planned photography inside the spacecraft. As a matter of fact, of the 850 pictures of the Earth that we took, I'm sure that uh, 800, 800 of them were taken after we put Houston to bed. But one thing we did do one night was, uh, one thing, it's all in how you look at it. <laughs> One thing we did do was uh, Joe set up a TV camera down in the mid-deck, and we just let it run for a while uh, 
while we ate our meal and did some things, and we just thought we'd show you uh, how much fun it is in zero G, and uh, just as easy. I, I found in, in this particular scene that I was just tall enough so that my feet could touch the ceiling and my head could just touch that water tank, and uh, I could stay there all day, upside down or right side up, whichever. Notice the checklist out there in the middle of the mid-deck. Now this is the part that sure beats working for a living, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's like a couple of porpoises or something swimming around. We'd had the good fortune to uh, to do some homework. Well, here's one of the experiments, uh, the uh, nighttime optical survey of lightning that uh, was meant to study uh, lightning patterns and uh, from uh, from orbit to uh, to look at different uh, patterns, not only from cloud to cloud, but within the cloud itself. And uh, from the meteorology standpoint, there are just some spectacular clouds to be seen once you realize what's happening down there. Those of you out at Edwards who were watching, you notice these, these white puffs coming out. We were, we were not attempting to write Burma Shave, although Dick and I have talked about it <laughs> beforehand. These are exhaust plumes from the reaction control jets, the yaw jets, uh, responding to the inputs uh, of some of the latter um, program test inputs, the, the data maneuvers that we were flying to uh, determine the derivatives of the vehicle, the lateral directional uh, derivatives of the vehicle. Incidentally, the airplane throughout the entire entry and landing phase, to the best we could tell, was just as solid as a rock. It, it had uh, no overshoot, no oscillations that we feared might, we might see in some areas. Just a very steady, solid vehicle all the way down. Final approach, you can see the chase plane out to the side there. Uh, we did switch runways. Uh, we were originally going to land on runway 15 and take advantage of a crosswind so that we could evaluate what the crosswind characteristics of the, of the uh, orbiter were as we landed. Uh, the winds actually picked up a little more than what we had uh, planned to try on our first, at least our first crosswind attempt, so we switched back around to runway 23 at Edwards and landed essentially into the wind with uh, practically no crosswind component with a pretty healthy headwind component. Columbia has uh, very little tile damage after this flight, which we think is really marvelous for a vehicle this size and uh, on only the second flight. That's not going to be a major problem in the turnaround. My main chore during the landing was to lower the landing gear, which incidentally went down right on time. <laughs> <laughs> and all the way. And all the way. There's a chase which did uh, super jobs. We rolled out about 7,000 feet. Uh, we did do a braking test on rollout, which was one of the, which was really our final flight test objective, if you will. And um, the braking test went well. Uh, we, I think, demonstrated. Of course, we had the headwind, so we stopped shorter than we would have with uh, with no wind. But we did stop the vehicle in 7,000 feet of ground roll. I think demonstrating that that uh, certainly the bird is capable of landing on our. 15,000 feet and probably our 10,000 foot designated runways with no problem. And I say we did light braking too. It, we certainly didn't go uh, to maximum braking on the, uh, maximum application on the brakes. We maintained between seven and eight feet a second deceleration rate. When we landed, I felt uh, perfectly normal except for the 350 pound person sitting on my shoulders. <laughs> uh, Seriously, that was the only uh, sensation that I really had when we got back on Earth was uh, just really felt uh, heavy, but after we walked around the bird uh, here for five minutes, uh, 
uh, that went away, and it was uh, then we were back in 1G. I told Dr. Kraft I thought that the only thing that's really bad about the orbiter is when you put 1G in it. Okay.